EMG question of the day. Which of the following best capture the size of a single motor unit during low force EMG examination? A. Axial or monopolar needle amplitude. B. Concentric needle duration. C. Single fiber EMG duration. D. Macro EMG amplitude. The blue hexagons represent all the muscle fibers belonging to a single motor unit. The territory seeded by muscle fibers from a single lower motor neuron usually expands between 5 to 10 millimeters and is shared by muscle fibers from about 10 to 20 different motor units. I must admit that I have not found the technical method, histoanatomical or electrophysiological, used as the gold standard to arrive to these conclusions. I assume these conclusions refer to limb muscle. Be it as it may, I will take the non-adjudicated conclusions and my assumption as true for the rest of this presentation. Using an axial or monopolar needle, schematically represented here by a central electrode in yellow, except at the tip covered by a layer of insulating material. The electrode is connected to the amplifier at the G1 position. The letter G stands for grid, a term used to imply the electrical system of the amplifier, and a distant cutaneous electrode used as reference, thus connected to the same amplifier at the G2 position. Such an arrangement will record a potential during minimal contraction whose amplitude and negative spike area are dictated by those muscle fibers closer to the needle surface and whose duration will be dictated by those fibers as far as 2.5 millimeters from the recording surface of the needle. Hence, as you can see represented here, the axial needle failed to capture the totality of the muscle fibers belonging to a single motor unit. A concentric needle is represented here by a relatively thin electrode in yellow separated by insulating material from the shaft that serves as a reference. Concentric needles will record a potential during minimal contraction whose amplitude and negative spike area is determined by a few fibers facing the recording area of the electrode and whose duration will be dictated by those fibers as far as 2.5 millimeters at the front and behind the recording surface just as axial needles do. Hence concentric needle EMG failed to capture the totality of the muscle fibers innervated by a single lower motor neuron. The single fiber EMG needle consists of a very thin electrode with its surface on the side about 7.5 millimeters from the tip of the electrode with a diameter of 25 micrometers in a cannula which is used as reference. This electrode will record a potential that reflects the electrical activity produced by the muscle or muscle fibers within 300 micrometers from the thin electrode recording surface. Thus, the potential obtained using single fiber EMG definitely do not reflect the territory of a motor unit. The macro EMG needle is a modified single fiber EMG needle in which the distal 15 millimeters of the cannula remains active, but above it, the shaft is covered with a layer of insulating material. In this frame, I have added single fiber EMG, which I will use to show the transformation required to build a macro EMG. As we mentioned, the distal 15 millimeters of the cannula is kept unchanged with recording capabilities, but above it, the cannula is covered by a layer of insulating material, as represented in this figure by the added green line. The very thin electrode is connected to the G1 position and the distal part of the cannula is connected to the G2 position of the amplifier. The clinger is that the distal part of the cannula is also connected to a second amplifier but at the G1 position and an additional surface electrode here indicated is connected to the G2 position of the second amplifier. This arrangement when recording EMG activity brought about by relatively low voluntary contraction will give us two perspectives. One perspective is from that of the thin electrode referred to the distal cannula. This perspective samples a very small area and produces a tracing where isolated single muscle fiber potentials can be viewed. In this particular tracing, judging by the shape of the potentials, we can count four different muscle fiber potentials, but only one of good configuration and significant amplitude, as you can see here and here. We will refer to them as prime potential. The second perspective is from that of the cannula referred to the surface electrode. This organization surveys a large area of the muscle that includes 
all the territory of the motor unit producing the prime potential, as illustrated here. It is important to emphasize that the activity surveyed by the cannula to surface arrangement represents the summation of at least 10 to 20 motor unit potentials, and therefore the component corresponding to the lower motor neuron producing the prime potential needs to be extracted. So how do we subtract from the second channel the muscle fiber potentials not belonging to the same motor unit as the prime potential? The answer is average. Averaging will extract the contribution of all muscle fibers discharging in synchrony with the prime potential. As you can see in this new frame, I have labeled the prime muscle fiber potentials 1 and 2. Notice that I have introduced a triangle with prime potential number 1 at the vertex. I have done so to indicate the time span of the lower tracing to be used for averaging in relation to the number 1 prime potential. The triangle with no base just introduced will not be used for averaging because they do not meet the desired criteria for a prime potential. But the next large potential, a prime potential, will be used to select the segment of the lower tracing to be averaged in relation to it. So when this is done, that is when the components in channel 2, temporary related to the prime potential in channel 1, are extracted about 128 to 512 times. Or when the baseline of the average potential is straight, we get a macromotor unit potential whose amplitude corresponds best to the number of muscle fibers belonging to the same motor unit as the muscle fiber producing the prime potential. So how long this take? If we sample a potential discharging at 10 Hz, 100 samples will be gathered in 10 seconds, 200 samples will be gathered in 20 seconds, and 300 samples will be gathered in 30 seconds. So if we decide to look at 20 motor units as it is customary, it will take 10 minutes plus what it takes us to move the needle looking for different motor units. This is an example of macro motor unit collected from anterior tibialis normal muscle. This is an example of large macromotor units collected from anterior tibialis that has undergone reinnervation. Notice the grouping and predominance of type 1 fibers. This is an example of a small macromotor units typically found in myositis collected from the anterior tibialis muscle. So the answer to this question is D. Thank you very much for your attention.